Well, the clock is ticking towards the new millennium. There's just a million minutes to the year 2000. Not long to fix every single computer system in the country, and it's not just the obvious that will be affected. Sky's Kate Chaxfield takes a look at what we might be waking up to on January the 1st in the year 2000. It's the morning of the biggest hangover the world has ever seen. You're late for your first appointment of the new millennium. Why? Your alarm clock's failed. But rest assured, all over the country, indeed all over the world, alarms are going wrong. Today is going to be one long headache, and not just because of last night's alcohol. You decide perhaps food is the answer, nothing like a nice bacon sandwich to banish early morning blues. Microwave has other ideas. Its date chip is malfunctioning. For several years, we've been warned. Chips are embedded in the most unexpected places. Many things we take for granted will simply not work. The millennium issue is that computers have been designed with two digits for the date instead of four, talking about the year here. So 1999 is registered as 99. When that rolls over to 2000, it will go to 00, zero unless you've upgraded it to a four-digit date. The computer might think that you've gone back to 1900, um, or it might think that um, it's, it might go time traveling and get completely lost. The first step outdoors on the first day of the 21st century. Despite warnings, many companies fail to ensure their alarms are year 2000 compliant. So don't expect sympathy from insurance companies if, as a result, you're burgled. Many small to medium-sized businesses automatically think insurance is going to cover them. Well, it's not. Insurance is about protecting against the unforeseen, not the inevitable. And I'm afraid the year 2000 is all too inevitable. Odds on, you spent a fair bit of money last night and need to replenish your wallet. Yesterday, you most definitely had an account and were in credit. You think you've got problems, but around the world, whole financial institutions are in crisis. Mayhem on the high street, traffic lights out, causing car chaos. Almost all traffic light systems are controlled by a date and time chip. So it's chaos on earth, yet quiet in the skies. Where you'd expect to see a busy flight path, there are almost no aircraft. Most airlines, uncertain of the safety of air traffic control systems at the millennium, are not flying. So how's the other side of the world coping? You try a call abroad. Please hang up and try again. Their telephone exchanges have clearly been beaten by the bug. We've been in correspondence um, with all of our people that we deal with overseas to make sure that they are ready as well. And the, the answers we've had back are, are not as good as we would like. That won't affect telephone calls within the UK. We may have had some circumstances where a telephone call would not get through to some distant country. Into the office for a quick bit of catching up, but there's nothing quick about it. It will take weeks, if not months, for the failed networks to be corrected. Within that time, many companies will go under. They simply had not completed their year 2000 compliancy checks in time. About one in six organizations won't have completed and it will tend to be the larger organizations because they have the bigger projects. We've done a survey um, across all of the organizations in the UK, really to find out what the scale of the issue is. Um, and what they've reported back was a 32 billion pound bill. And all because most year dates in computer systems were stored as a two digit number, a seemingly insignificant oversight with global consequences. There are some lively scenes during a night of partying around the world. The Millennium Bug is being blamed for a series of road deaths as lighting and traffic lights fail. It's estimated that hundreds... The unexpected shutdown of four nuclear reactors has left large areas without electricity. Hospitals are spent. Surely it wasn't meant to be like this. A new millennium should mean a fresh start, not a future blighted by a bug. But at least you're not alone. The whole world is suffering with you. This, of course, is only a suggestion as to what might happen. 
But experts at today's conference warn that unless we start to work harder to ensure that all systems are year 2000 compliant, this or something far more serious will happen. Kate Chatfield, Sky News. Dolphins have again revealed their amazing healing powers, this time for children with cerebral palsy. Last week, a British boy spoke his first words after swimming with the creatures. Now the same treatment is helping a group of Cuban youngsters who are learning how... Doctors there had given up hope of saving her sight, but thanks to the generosity of a British eye surgeon, Dora has been given a chance to regain some vision. Peter Sharp has this special report. It was with songs of hope mixed with a certain measure of sadness that those who cared for baby Dora gathered to see her off to London. The three-year-old girl, dreadfully burnt in a fire in a squatter camp near Johannesburg two and a half years ago, had been looked after at this Catholic children's home. A baby girl without a face, but with a spirit to survive an ordeal that would have killed most adults. Reunited with her mother Margaret at Christmas, the trip to meet with eye specialists in London was her only chance to restore her sight. South African doctors have tried their best and have kind of felt that the eyesight is probably no more restorable. On the other hand, I hope that an avenue is open to give the child the best that can be given to her. This is what we did last uh, time for the immunization. For Bromwyn Jones, the English journalist who'd led the fight to save Dora's eyes, the trip had been marked.